The city of Caen was one of the most important targets for British forces landing in Normandy on D-Day. Recognizing the strategic importance of the city, the Germans dug in and battled hard to keep them at bay. As a result, weeks of violent and exhausting battle ensued, as British and Canadian troops attempted to seize a city that had turned into a fortress. Like other key cities in Normandy in the invasion area, Caen was a vital road junction and a crucial strategic location. From here, the Allies could then break out into more open land to the southeast, where their tanks could travel freely. The Germans hoped to keep the Allies from capturing it, denying them the opportunity to march east to west, and break out of the Bocache, which was a patchwork of fields bordered by wooded embankments, that gave the defender every advantage, and the attacker none. The Germans threw everything they could into the gaps, as a response to the Allied invasion. The forces defending Khan were a diverse group that underwent continuous change. Some of the Germans came from the SS, the Nazi Party's military wing. The SS was a well-trained and well-equipped fighting elite, who were more fanatical to the cause of Nazi Germany than other soldiers. Parts of the 12th SS Panzer Division an armored formation led by Colonel Kurt Meyer, one of Germany's leading tank commanders, were among the SS troops in Caen. There were also Hitler Youth troops among the SS. The propaganda campaigns of the Nazi Party had enticed these teenagers into the war. Additionally, there were more conventional troops, such as artillery units. However, the SS took the brunt of the fighting. In anticipation of an Allied invasion, the Germans had already started constructing defenses around Normandy. Meyer used the Ardennes Abbey Tower to have a better view of the fighting. The Commonwealth troops approached Caen and dug in, using the existing buildings as defensive posts as they drew closer. From the start of the landings, Caen was an objective for the British Army and other troops fighting under British command, notably Canadians and Poles. German resistance was fierce, making it difficult for them to capture the town on the first day. The British were trapped on the road to the town, as the fighting spread into the dense Norman countryside. During the night of the 6th of June, Panzer Battalion II, which was equipped with Panzer IV tanks arrived. The next morning, Panzer Battalion I, armed with Panther tanks arrived. General Kurt Meyer was examining his area of approach on the morning of June 7, from the steeple of the Ardennes Abbey, three miles northwest of Caen. The sight of an advancing armored column startled Meyer. The Canadians of the 27th Tank Regiment and 2nd Armoured Brigade were undertaking a leisurely and ambitious attempt to conquer the coveted Carpiquet airfield. The Canadians rolled casually along a route lined with camouflaged German Panzer IV tanks and artillery, apparently unaware of the powerful nearby enemy presence. Meyer, who had a battalion of Panzer Grenadiers and a tank battalion at his disposal, personally oversaw the German attack. By then, the Germans at Caen had 50 tanks ready to engage the enemy. Meyer gave the order to attack, when the unwary convoy reached the Caen Bayou Road. Hearing the command, all tanks of Panzer Battalion II, positioned to the left of Ardennes Abbey started their engines, and lurched forward to look for the enemy. The Panzer IVs emerged seemingly out of nowhere on the enemy's left flank. The unplanned German ambush was a total rout. The Canadians retreated, leaving 21 Shermans knocked out in their wake. Meyer launched a counterattack on the night of the 8th of June, almost breaking through the Canadian lines and isolating some units. 
the British and Canadians sat facing Khan for more than two weeks. They were unable to make significant progress towards the city, despite persistent fighting and the added pressure of Allied air power. On June 13, the 22nd British Armoured Brigade advanced as far as the outlying village of Ville Bocache. Meanwhile, the Germans had already anticipated the move by the British. The Panzers were back on the move, and Panzer leader Michael Whitman and his small squad of Tigers were ordered to make their way to the area from their base camp in Beauvais. The Allies had been completely unaware of the presence of the German Panzers in the area as they advanced, and Whitman was watching. He clearly felt that he could not allow this situation to escape him. Whitman attacked the column alone, while his other four tanks provided cover fire. He took out four Sherman tanks at a distance of 80 meters. He then roared up to the column, turned his Tiger parallel to it, and drove alongside the column, blasting enemy tanks, in the direction of the advance. Whitman had concluded the day with 25 British tanks, to go along with the 119 Soviet tanks he had destroyed in nearly three years on the Eastern Front. His actions on this day, earned him the addition of rare swords to his Knight's Cross, as well as a promotion to Captain. More importantly, he and his fellow SS had crushed the armored spearhead of Montgomery's main thrust. Another major drive on Khan was successfully halted. On June 26, General Montgomery started the first in a series of coordinated attempts to capture Khan. Operation Epsom was a southward push through the countryside west of the town. The plan was to turn around and take high ground south of Khan, giving the Allies the upper hand in future battles. 60,000 men took part in Epsom, supported by almost 600 tanks and 700 artillery. Epsom was difficult from the start. The Allies encountered German forces dug in behind every hedgerow and turn of the road in Normandy. Because it was difficult to spot the enemy, British forces frequently drove right into danger. On the 27th, a German counterattack was repulsed, but the going was still slow. The 11th Armored Division finally reached Hill 112, and the high ground Epsom was aiming for, on June 29th. But, just as his forces were about to reach their destination, General Dempsey made a critical mistake. He pulled the 11th Armored Division back across the River Odin, believing that his troops were too exposed. On June 30, at dawn, the 2nd SS Panzer Corps launched a surprise counterattack on the crucial heights, supported by heavy mortar and artillery fire. Despite the fact that codebreakers had informed them of the assault, and they had packed tanks, anti-tank artillery, and a machine gun battalion onto the hilltop, the speed and power of the Panzer advance threw the British off-guard, and Hill 112 changed bloody hands once more. Epsom was put to an end by Montgomery. Despite some modest gains, the Allies fell short of their goal. Over 4,000 casualties were sustained during the process. The Germans had lost almost 3,000 men, but held their ground. If only for a little while, another Allied threat to Khan had been averted. The battle for Khan reached a climax with Operation Goodwood. This operation, launched on July 18, combined a British advance beyond the city with a direct assault by the Canadians, with the goal of eventually driving the Germans out. Despite being heavily bombarded, the Germans held on, and took up their positions as the Canadians advanced. They used their defensive advantage once more, to set up ambushes and force difficult assaults. 
Anti-aircraft guns were converted into field pieces, capable of destroying oncoming tanks. Rommel had managed to transfer four large reinforcement forces, from his 1st and 19th armies to the Khan salient, allowing him to fight his old foe, Montgomery, to a halt. Montgomery was taken aback, by the Germans' ability to deploy army columns, across unbridged rivers despite heavy air bombardment, and it reminded him of a bleak possibility that had plagued him for some time. Following a creeping artillery barrage, the Shermans rumbled through the dust over ground marked by bomb craters. The tanks continued in a narrow column, first through the cleared British minefields, and then through a two-kilometer wide corridor flanked by the factories of Khan to the west, and a forest to the east. The key division to hold up the British armor, was Major Hans von Luck's battle group, including his 125th Panzer Grenadier Regiment, and Major Alfred Becker's 200th Assault Gun Battalion. Major von Luck quickly set up five 88mm guns in the orchard, ambushed the British column, destroyed 12 tanks, but it was too late. More than 100 Shermans had already passed through Cagney, and were on their way to Borgibus. Another attack outside Cagney cost more time and lives, this time by six Tigers from the 503rd Heavy Tank Division, who knocked out nine of the enemy tanks. The Sherman, which ran on high-octane gasoline rather than diesel, was notoriously flammable, and outclassed in other ways by the larger, better armored and armed panzers they faced in France. This was more than offset by the Sherman's superior speed, maneuverability, range, mechanical reliability, and numerical superiority. Despite several days of heavy fighting, Goodwood did not provide Montgomery with the breakthrough he had hoped for. However, it did affect the situation in Caen. The majority of the city was now under Allied control. British and Canadian forces had achieved their objective a month after setting out. The defense of Caen could be considered one of the German successes in Normandy. They inflicted heavy casualties on the Allies, and held them up for weeks. However, this came at a cost as the commitment drew their forces away from other areas. But, the price had been heavier on the other side. It was terrible for the inhabitants of Khan. Their city was destroyed, and many people perished. They were left to reconstruct their lives amid the rubble, as the war progressed. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.